tell you, um, Jeannie, and right now I'm a little bit um, shivery. My husband probably feels a little bit shivery too. Because Jean, just tonight, wow, crazy that you came and talked about that. Just tonight, my husband and I almost got ran over. Oh, wow. Right, um, leaving out of Kruger, made a left on Boston Road, in front of 2440. Yes. And um, I was walking right behind my husband, so the person only saw my husband. My husband yelled, like, you know, what the hell are you doing? So after my husband was out the way, the guy thought it was just my husband, so he pressed on the gas really hard and then almost got me because he didn't see me behind my husband. So I cannot thank you enough for the efforts that you are making to keep us safe in the neighborhood. So definitely, I will definitely sign that petition. I think my husband will too. <laughs> Definitely. Um, it is, it is um, I don't know if many people know that Boston Road is a highway. Yeah. It's a highway. Well. It is a highway. So thank you for all of that, Jane. Um, the next person I want to introduce, and I want everybody, you know that when we have a new business in the community, I always like to welcome them into the community. And I remember once I did a party for one of them. Um, but every business that comes into the community builds our community. And therefore, we also want to support our small business uh, entrepreneurs, no? And today, we have a special guest, and I'm so excited to introduce her. I'm going to help do a little bit of translation, but I think she'll do fine. I think she'll do fine. Her name is Martha, and as you can see, she can't wait to get the microphone. That's it. I'm going to have to give up my microphone. <laughs> That's it. She is awesome. I have nails done today. And today also she's going to tell a little bit about her business and then she's going to give our raffle tickets. And we're going to call out three raffle tickets. And the winners will be, one will be hair set for free or your nails done or a pedicure. If it's a man, a pedicure or a manicure. Okay, so you'll be able to choose. She's handing out her business card. But I, I want you to get a feel of her. So, Martha, let me do that for you. Benny, I'm on the microphone. And let's give her a nice warm welcome for opening up her business here. That's what we call a bee pack of all. The button was better than that, right? The bee pack of all was much better than that, right? That's not how we'll be back a welcome. That's right. And guess what? She will also be at who's my party? Woohoo! <laughs> Siete días. Siete días. 
every day. Nueve de la mañana, nine o'clock in the morning, de nueve a siete, to seven o'clock at night, domingo de diez a cinco de la tarde, Sunday from ten to five. Okay. And please, she does have a Facebook. Marta Peralta, ¿qué me hay? Marta <laughs> Peralta, M A R T E, ajá, H. Marta Peralta, M A R T H A P E R A L T A. And like her Facebook and listen to her Facebook shouts. <laughs> She's a lot more excited than she displayed here. Okay? So we're going to give her support. Okay? Thank you. We're going to have to give her all those gratitude. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple more speakers. Um, actually, one more. Um, Angelina? Is she here? I'm Angelina, not but she didn't. No. Okay, no problem. Yeah. All right, um, I guess our final speaker, it's very important, yes, we're involved at the local level, but there's a lot of citywide organizations that do important work that need the support of the people who are here. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, um, they do events all around the city, they have meetings. One of those groups is Transportation Alternatives. They've been doing, uh, Noma, Noma. Noma. Um, they've been doing very important work concerning pedestrian safety, um, access to our roads for bicycles and other alternative modes of transportation. So um, he's from the Transportation Alternatives Bronx Activist Committee. Please welcome Erwin Figueroa. Yes. Oh, all right, thanks for all for the invitation. As you all know, uh, I was present at the press conference last year for the Ryan Avenue Bronx Park East. Uh, your request for a stoplight, and one of the reasons we're here today, I'm here today, is uh, we have a concerted effort to work on uh, East Bronx this year. Uh, I'm here to hear the concerns. I've heard a lot of Boston Road concerns today, tonight, and we're here to help. We're here to work with you in terms of creating safer streets for people to walk, ride a bicycle, or more efficient public transit. Um, the, other, the other reason I'm here today is that we have a campaign called Every School. Um, this campaign is to expand the amount of speed safety cameras to cover the New York City schools. Uh, at the moment, there's only 140 cameras covering the school zones in New York City. There's over 2,000 schools in New York City, so that means there's 93% uh, of the schools are not being covered by speed safety cameras. And unfortunately, uh, our children are the most in danger of being hit by vehicles in New York City. Uh, out of the eight students that were killed last year in New York City, four of them were in the Bronx. So it's especially important in the Bronx to have these proven life-saving measures. Um, we have a letter, and it's, you can think of it as a coalition letter, and an infographic that explains yeah, that explains uh, how the speed safety cameras work and how they benefit everyone. So the problem with speed safety cameras right now, apart from the low number of speed safety cameras, is that they only work from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the weekdays. So anything uh, that happens outside of those hours, there's no speed safety cameras that are uh, protecting the, the, the streets in front of the schools. There's also a limited uh, distance that they, they can be installed in New York City. It's only a quarter of a mile from the entrance to the school. Um, as you all know, there's events in schools that go beyond 6 p.m. That, and those events are not being uh, covered by the police safety cameras. And this program is really, is very fair, actually, to drivers. It's only a $50 fine, and it only gives the ticket if the driver is going above 10 miles per hour of the speed, of the speed limit. So if it's a 20 mile per hour road, it will only activate if the driver is going 30 miles uh, per hour or higher. And it is estimated if we expand the speed safety camera program to all schools in New York City, we'll be able to save around 100 lives each year and 1,400 uh, injuries by, for students. Um, so I'm here if you have any questions in terms of this uh, campaign that we have. 
Uh, we would love to have the Bronx Park Museum Association join us in this coalition. We have over 250 organizations already on board, and they range from schools to hospitals, community organizations, uh, elected officials such as uh, uh, Council Member Richie Torres on board as well. And we need all the support that we can get this year because, you know, lives are at stake. And every day kids are mm -hmm. trying to cross the street to go to school and it shouldn't be something that they fear for their lives trying to cross the streets. It says here, sign up for the petition for, for the safety uh, cameras at every school. And it shows the website. If you're not online, can I stop? Is there a paper petition I can sign? So I don't have a paper petition today, but uh, I can bring that to the next meeting so you can sign up. Okay. Well, I, a couple of things. Um, when you say safety camera, this is basically a speeding camera is what you're talking about. Yes. Right? So really, there is no safety because a child can get hit by a car, and all they're going to do is find the driver. So the, the term safety camera is an oxymoron. It really doesn't apply. Uh, so I'm not comfortable with that because it really would be better to have more safety uh, crossing guards instead of, if you really want to protect, that would be a good campaign to do instead of having safety cameras. Also, I was in Albany about a year or so ago, and they had a bill come up, and that was voted down about these, uh, these safety cameras because they, around schools specifically, because they deemed it to be just a money-making uh, scheme. So they already voted that down in Albany. So how do you, you're going to have a petition to go what, to Albany? Or who are you petitioning? So when we're talking about speed safety cameras, what we mean by safety is speed safety cameras have been proven to lower the amount of speeding in your schools. So how this is working in other areas in the nation has been that the speeding goes down and eventually there's not as much speeding to the streets near schools. So that's why it means it should be protected. It decreases significantly the amount of speeding. Also in terms of the money, so the money that is made is only a $50 ticket. It is much less than a ticket being given by a police officer. And no points. And no points are being taken See, by that's, the That's by not the good. You need points. So, and also with, the, with these cameras, um, the money that is, being, that is being generated goes where? Goes to a general fund, like every uh, system of this nature in the city. And our hope is that the speeding goes down significantly where there's no income, there's no money being driven by the speed cameras because they've been so effective. The speed has gone down so much mm -hmm. that the cameras are not needed anymore. And, and, and who controls, what is this general fund? Where does the money go to? What does it go for? So the general fund, there's, if money is not allocated specifically to programs of source, and the reason why is um, what has happened is if money is being allocated to specific programs, what you might do is the, have that money be the money that is originally allocated for, for like funds uh, stipulated for budget uh, to be taken back and being replaced by speeding, uh, the speeding funds. So what that means is that there will be an incentive for people to keep speeding in order to get those, those funds for specific programs. If you keep it to a general fund, uh, the goal is not to generate money. The goal is to create a culture where speeding is frowned upon and speeding is not uh, a day-to-day -day thing in the process. Right. Okay, but but you are going to generate money. So uh, so who controls that money and where does it go? That money goes to, uh, is controlled by the city, by the mayor's office. Ah, it's, it's, okay. a, it's a general fund. It's not... They are allocated by a specific department, they are allocated by a specific elected official. Mm -hmm. It goes to different areas of where it is needed in the city. Hmm. Is, is, is this part of the vision zero? No. So not... Because, yeah. you know, I, for example, you know, I'm driving every day. And according to my understanding, school zones already have vehicles with cameras already. Not, not all, no. Not, not all, all no. but it's something that's already in existence. Yeah, they have um, vehicles, they usually have a cone right up top. Now, specifically, I can tell you specifically the one on by St. Raymond's Church on, by Castle Hill. There's right there, you can always see it because we go down with the buses down that street, so we already know 
pretty much like where they are in certain streets. So I don't understand how is this. So, at the moment, there's only 140 cameras being allocated to New York City mm -hmm. that cover the entire city. I'm talking right. all five boroughs. Right. There's over 2,000 schools in New York City. So, it's only around 7% of schools that have three cameras nearby. Um, and this is not a Vision Zero initiative in right. the sense that the speed cameras are actually allocated by the state government. So the New York City elected officials, local elected mm -hmm. officials, don't really have a say of how many uh, um, specific cameras can, can be installed or where they can be installed. It's more interesting. So um, just to quickly explain it, New York City, in a way, to use a better term, is enslaved to New York State. We can, there's a lot of things we just can't do without the approval of people in Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse who care nothing about New York City, my opinion. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. That's true. true. So, speed safety cameras, like um, income tax, if we want to raise income tax in New York City, mm -hmm. we need the state's approval. If we want to put more speed cameras in our street, we need the state's approval. So, this is a campaign. This, so, this is really isn't a city campaign. Um, so the in the sense that only the city government is involved. This is a city campaign to advocate the state to let us put more speed cameras in front of schools. Explain it. So oh. us meaning a private contract company? Right. Who's going to pay for the cameras? So the money for the cameras is a flat fee being allocated to the whoever they contracted the company. But who's but I and but who's who's paying the contractor? In other words, is it going to come from Albany? Because, they, like I said, they already killed the bill. That was already voted down because they had this bill up. So who's going to pay them? I mean, if Albany, if you tell Albany, you don't have to pay for it, we're going to pay for it, they'll, they'll probably say, sure, go ahead, because it's not coming out of our pocket. But whose pocket does it come out of? Who's going to pay the contractors? Who's going to pay for the cameras? Who's going to pay to monitor them? And Meh, nah, but... Who pays the roads? Contractors for the city or the city? Well, that's a different issue, though, Rafael. That's different. So the reason why we're, we're for this speed safety camera is it's is proven to be effective. It has reduced the amount of speeding in the streets that have been allocated in New York City. Um, like I said, we have over 250 coalition partners. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the American Heart Association. In the Bronx, we have Bronx Works, Bronx Health Reach. Um, and this is something that it will also cover the entire, uh, all, all the time in New York City. What I mean is, like, right now, it's only for the time from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. Meanwhile, most crashes in New York City happen during the night. And people are walking, you know, there's a late event in school, there's a play, there's a PTA meeting that happens beyond 6 p.m., mm -hmm. beyond 7 p.m. And God forbid there's a crash that happens there. It's a speeding. It's not being enforced. And we need to create a culture where speeding is thrown upon. And the best way to do this is with the technology for speed safety cameras. And right. in terms of the school officers, unfortunately, they only work at certain times. And beyond those times, there's no school safety agents. But, but you didn't say who's going to pay for it. You didn't answer the question. I'm sorry. You gotta turn, Francis. On a particular intersection, particular crossing. Any? You, but that's something that, again, that's a driver yeah. issue. What street? What no, street? No, it's not. Any street? That's what but, I'm asking. But that's a driver issue. If somebody doesn't yield the right of way, Francis. General, general statement. Do we have any other questions? No. Where can we learn more about this? So on the back of the, of the flyer with the infographic has a website called everyschool.nyc. You can sign a petition there if you are part of a school or organization and you want to have that organization be part of the coalition. You can also sign up the, the, the coalition letter there. I also have copies of the coalition letter. Um, on the table if you guys want to see it and have more details. Um, another thing that I wanted to announce is that we have a petition hub on our website. If you have any idea, uh, any campaign, any petition that you want to have about any local street in your community, you can host a petition on our website. We'll promote it. 
and it will go directly either to elected officials, the community boards, the agencies that you want to target. What? So, out of the, the average campaigns that transall.org, if you want to know more about our work in the Bronx, you can go to transall.org forward slash Bronx. And that will give you links to not only the website, but also the Facebook. Uh, Facebook is facebook.com forward slash TA Bronx Committee. You want to, okay. you're all, I know some of you are on Instagram. You want to just go to your Instagram app, type in transportation alternatives. They have an Instagram page. You can also go to Facebook, search um, transportation alternatives, and their profile picture will be this orange T. Mm -hmm. And click like, and if you're really interested, hold like, or you could ask me, and click see first, which means every time you log on to Facebook, whenever they post, you're pretty much guaranteed to see what they're, what what they're posting. They click one? See you first. That one? That's hard to send. I would have to say it. But transportation alternatives, just search it. It's simple. <laughs> and... Yeah. You have a Is it a non-profit organization? Yeah, there is a non-profit organization. Um, transportation alternatives. I'm sorry? Transportation alternatives. Uh, we're mostly volunteer-based. Uh, most of our work in the Bronx is, uh, is uh, headed by volunteers. And there's people like all of you that mm -hmm. care about street safety in their communities in the Bronx overall. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, I'll stay here. Uh, I'll take to the end, so please come by, ask me any questions. If you want to have more info, I can definitely uh, be more than willing to answer any questions. Thank you, everyone. Just give them a hand. Um, Angelina, you want to just speak briefly about the program? Sure. We're going to do the raffle in another five minutes. Um, I have a question. Is everyone okay being in the group picture once we end the meeting? If, you're, if you do not want to be in the group picture, just be on that side, the picture would be taken that way. I've not taken any pictures, so don't worry. Angelina? Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so I am a mother and grandmother of a child that has a learning disability and is on the spectrum. And I'm always looking for services. And unfortunately, I don't think that we have enough services mm -hmm. in our community. Right. So lo and behold, I went to Bronx House. And there is a service coordinator there by the name of Noelia Fernandez, which I invited today, and I'm hoping that she'll come in the near future to provide us with a presentation. And they're starting a lot of wonderful programs there. They have a Sunday fun day where the children, they're giving dancing and art programs, and the parents could, can interact. They're also planning a day camp for the summer for six, five to six weeks. And they're going to have another Sunday fun day coming in in the in the uh, in the spring. And there's other activities that they're they're formulating now. The the program is fairly new. She told me I met with her last night. It's about two years. Um, for those children that have Medicaid and have a service coordinator, if the parent pays, they'll get total reimbursement uh, for a lot of services that they're providing. Um, so I'm sure many of you may know that, that in the United States alone, we have between 500 to 1 million children diagnosed with autism between the ages of 16 and 17. And I was trying to do a search just to know, because I'm curious, how many, how many children do we have within our own area? And we don't have enough services. So I wanted to share this information, first of all, because I'm a concerned mom and grandma, and secondly, I'm a social worker, and I'm always looking for resources and to share with people in the community. I'm hoping to invite Noelia, and if anyone's interested in knowing any additional information, I'm uh, planning to start a support group with her at, at Bronx House. So come on by and say hi. And talk. Quick question. And, yeah. yeah. This is just for autistic, or is this... For example, children that have IEPs that are not no, autistic. No, children with IEPs. I don't know. That's why I wanted her to come because she's the parent coordinator for uh, children with special needs. So mm -hmm. within special needs, there's all different diagnoses, right? right? Mm -hmm. But she started this particular group. It's called Sunday Fun Day, and it's for children who are on the spectrum. So okay. I'm sure that they work with children with all kind of, of different diagnoses. Okay. Yeah. I need more information. Yeah. Um, <laughs> When these children go on to college, a lot, even the SUNY, the, the CUNY SUNY colleges, yes. there are a lot of services that they do not provide, like extra tutoring that may be needed for students with disabilities. Some of the, of the colleges, they'll offer 
tutoring for like the first two years. But once you begin to be what, like sophomore and senior, mm -hmm. there were no services. That's true. None. That's well, true. The, grade, the older they get, no the less they get. And this is something that I think, especially in CUNY and SUNY schools, mm -hmm. they need to have provided. You know, in the school, in the, in the colleges, they have services for, for individuals with disabilities. Mm. Each college, whether it be SUNY or CUNY, they do. I know because I was a recipient of one. Okay, I'm, I'm partially blind and I went and I got plenty of services. Now I'm sure that they accommodate and they give you accommodations for exams, for whatever it may be, your challenge may be. Okay. Now there's also okay. additional okay. services for, I'm well, sorry? Maybe they're not advertising there it. There is not much being much. But like, my son has, has a disability. He's dyslexic and he has dyspraxia. Uh -huh. And he got a lot of tutoring, wonderful tutoring, at uh, the borough of Manhattan College. But when he graduated and went on to try to get into a four year, there are no, there's like no tutoring for computer science class, math class at the higher level. We went to Brooklyn College. There's almost no tutoring in any of these schools for the upper grade. And he wants to go back to school, but he's afraid of I suggest that services not as I suggest if, if your son's going to register for higher education, for you to meet with the counselor at, at the school of choice. I, I went to Columbia and I had my services. I went to City University, seeing the college, all these things. They do have a service coordinator for people with disabilities, and I'm sure he could be provided the additional services. There's also a service for people, uh, OPWDD. Are you familiar with that? Okay, so OPWDD, um, and I'm not quite sure the services they provide for young adults, but I'm not sure. If you have Medicaid, as, as the child goes on to higher grades, they provide additional services. I suggest that you go and contact them. There's, you have to start by going to a seminar called the front door. Each borough has it, and that's kind of like the opening, the open door. After you do that, you provide them with the evaluation, the psychological, the medical, and so on. And then they give you something called a service coordinator. And that service coordinator is supposed to coordinate all the services that an individual needs in order to be successful. Whether it be educationally, and within the community, they, they provide all the services for the person to be as independent as possible. Thank you, thank you, Angelina. Right, before we end the meeting and do the raffle, I just wanted to make sure everyone got a meeting agenda. It is on the table that Kathleen raised her hand, but I Kathleen in front of her. There's a bunch of stuff that's going on this month. Grace, um, Tomorrow, for guys, one meeting. We're not done yet, please. Hello. Grace. Um, there's a bunch of stuff going on the next month. Thank you. If you look on the bottom half of the sheet, just a shout out, a couple, um, I, I try to vary what's on here. If anyone interested in Bronx-based um, bands, Baychester Blues is a really good band. Um, they're based in Co-op City. They're gonna be performing in Pelham Bay this Friday at Jimmy Ryan's, probably some of us know Jimmy Ryan's, on uh, Middle, Middleton Road. The uh, Police Precinct Council is next Tuesday at Mars Park Community Association, Bronxdale Avenue. Um, the clergy council is doing a fundraiser. Grace, um, do you have any info uh, on that? No. Nothing. No. Where is it? Mm. When? Where is it? Well, are you doing that, it? That's chain. Uh, no. It's changed. It's cha yeah. So. All right. So disregard yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, if you want to come to my open mic? It's next Friday. Anyhow, um, Keith Walton, who spoke last month, he's having his court hearing. Uh, I believe it's a trial date February. on Tuesday, February seventh. 9 a.m. Um, meet up location, just give me a call. We'll be going as a group. Um, our next meeting here will be um, February 22nd. Last Wednesday, of, the last Wednesday of every month we meet. So even if you don't see flyers, even if you didn't hear from me via text, Facebook, or Instagram, last Wednesday of every month. Uh, next one's February 22nd. Also, Saturday, February 25th is the annual Bronx Parks Speak Up. If you're interested in um, advocating
advocating for parks, for more park funding, for employees in our parks to keep our parks clean and well maintained. Please come. There'll be a lot of exhibits, a lot of um, uh, workshops. Milka Martell will be there. She's a uh, queen of the Bronx. Um, and please keep in touch before then. Any other questions before we do the raffle? Kathleen? Yes. Tenet. Well, yes. I was not, I was not going to ask Yes. So I wrote a poll to donate somebody from our community. And since Jean is looking to for coat to give to prisoners, I go to the Bronx Parkies Community Association, donate a nice coat for a prisoner that's losing our community. Thank you, Kathleen. All right, do we have any other um, any other questions or concerns before we do the raffle? Anything? All right, Norma, let's do the raffle.